Alrighty guys, in this video I'll be installing a 10.25 inch screen in my W204 facelift C-Class. This process should be the same for basically every facelift W204 and pretty similar to the W212 facelift and CLS of the same era, I think it's W218 uh, facelift as well. So this unit was supplied by Avin USA. I'll put a link in the description below. Check out their products. They have this along with other products for other cars. I've installed a unit in my ML as well as my 3 Series. Hoping to do one of my 5 Series after this as well. But anyways, let's get to it. I'm going to open the box up. It is a pretty simple box, pretty straightforward. Um, the install can be a little bit intimidating, so I'm going to walk you through every step of the process. Here we've got the Avin car. Thanks again for sponsoring this video, Avin. First of all, we got the screen back here. It is a 10.25 inch unit, like I said before. This is the all new Qualcomm variant, so it has the latest chipset. I'll put the specs below as well. It is also a glossy screen on this one. I think you can opt for a uh, matte screen if you prefer that instead. Here we've got the entire beefy wiring harness that connects to your original command unit and also connects to your aux port. This unit uses the aux port for um, any audio, so just keep that in mind in terms of uh, making sure your car has a Mercedes Media Interface plug in the glove box. All the wiring aside for now, we don't really need that this second. We can take a look here at some GPS antennas and Wi-Fi antennas. Now, um, this is also, I believe, either a microphone or a speaker of some sort. I've heard it's not necessary for our region in the U.S., so I'm not going to use that, I don't think, at least for now. I might plug it in to see. Um, but here we've got the connections for the media. This goes to your aux port, essentially. And then uh, this guy will plug into the media interface in your glove box. I believe most of these cars come with iPod connectivity. You know, remember those things? Yeah, this will plug in the, in the glove box. And, um, yeah, we're going to put this aside as well. And then this is going to plug into the main harness for the unit. And we've also got some more antennas in this area over here. This right here is what makes this such a seamless fit. This will essentially go into your dash. You can screw it in there, and it looks like it's going to be an OEM fixture, like some of the newer cars are. Here are the screws for that. Now, I made a video about this earlier, about how you can put some felt tape on this guy to reduce any noise at all. Um, so I'll put a link in the description of that video as well. Or if you just want to mimic what I've done over here, I'll put a link to the tape I used in the description. It makes it essentially noise-free, um, so it will be very, very seamless and OEM feeling install. I will also put a link to this in the description. It is an MPOW ground loop insulator. Um, essentially, you put this in between the car's aux and the aux output for the unit over here. Um, it, it removes any sort of staticky noise you may hear, or any uh, hum or vibration. Um, not vibration, many hum essentially you can hear through the speakers. This guy's a lifesaver for sure. I will put this in the description below. Before I actually go ahead and start installing stuff, I want to show you guys kind of lay the land with the wiring here and how it's all going to kind of connect to each other, how it's all going to work. Looks like spaghetti right now, but don't worry. Hopefully I'll take some confusion out of this by kind of going over where each thing goes. Starting with this guy right over here. So this connection is going to go in the back of the actual Android screen itself. So it's kind of at the top of your dash. It's going to kind of go behind a lot of some uh, center support beams for the dash itself. If you have an aftermarket backup camera, you'll be using these guys. Now, I don't have an aftermarket backup camera. I have the OEM one um, over here. I'm sure most of you guys are also gonna have the OEM one. Just because in the US, I think most cars had the backup camera from the factory. So I'm not gonna really be talking about this very much because it's really applied to my car. Anyways, that aside, this long wire goes all the way to this sort of microphone speaker doohickey. I'm not quite sure the purpose of this is. I've heard it is a speaker for some Asian countries. You can use it. I'm not, not entirely sure, you know, what this really does. So I'm going to be unplugging it and not using it. Um, it's going to take up space for no reason. So there's no point. I'm putting that aside. So don't really worry about that too much. Then over here is the fun part. This snakes all the way down to this little fuse box over here. Then we have all the audio madness. So this will be an audio in for an aux in input. If you ever want to use that for whatever reason, I will not be using that. Then we have the audio out over here. This wire over here is gonna be kind of extended all the way out and go below your center console. It'll reach your center console and plug into your ground loop isolator over here, which will then plug into the media interface port. Next up, we got this guy over here. So this will be connecting mostly to USB ports down here. Now I'm gonna route these, my choice essentially to route these down to kind of where on the passenger footwell, there's a little bit of a cargo net there. I'm gonna route these to that area over there. We can plug in our CarPlay dongles and all that stuff. Um, you can just plug in whatever else you want through USB. It's basically an Android unit, remember? So you can plug basically whatever you want to plug in there. Over here, this will plug into the blue cable will be unplugged from our actual main screen. The black um, plug that we disconnect from the main screen will not be reused. 
we've got this guy for an external mic. Um, now, I won't be using one because I don't really have a need for one, um, but the sound quality through the OEM, well not OEM, but the mic on the actual Android screen is not the best in the world, so if you do a lot of phone calls, I recommend having an external mic and then putting that somewhere close to the steering wheel area. The first thing you want to do is remove your center trim piece over here. To do so, put the vents in the central position uh, for both the side to side and top to bottom rotation. The next step is to pry the trim from the right side or whichever side is your passenger side. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and use some pick tools you can see over here to sort of release the clips for the center vents. There's in the second slot of each air vent, uh, one on the right side, one on the left side, and then you can get that piece out eventually. Some wires you want to unplug just for the center controls over there. But other than that, it is nothing too major. At the very top of the command, you'll see two T20 Torx screws, one on each side of the unit. Go ahead and remove those. So essentially, once you've got those two screws out, they look like this over here, pretty long. You can put those aside for now. The locks release for the actual command unit, and you can actually pull the entire thing out. Before sliding the entire unit out, you're going to want to put the car in neutral or just take the shifter off so you have a little bit more space as it'll get in the way of uh, pulling the unit out. Now, you must be very careful this connector over here especially the two orange wires. So basically those two orange guys right here are fiber optic connections and those connect to your speaker system for the Harman Kardon sound system. Um, if you damage those in any way, you will need an entirely new harness, I believe, for most of your interior electronics, which is not going to be a fun job to do. They are fiber optic connections, so you can't really bend them. Um, they only want to move in a certain way, so just be very cautious of that. To release this clip, you have to push a tab at the very bottom of the command unit itself, and this entire thing is going to lift up and unlock the connector from the unit itself. Once you've got this connector out, you can also disconnect all the other connections from the back of the hand unit. If we take a better look at the back of the command over here, you can see this is where that bigger block connector was going to go. That's where it first came out of. Then you'll have a series of these round connections over here. Luckily, they are color-coded, so you can't really mess it up when you put it back together. But uh, to remove these, it can be a little bit stiff. There is a little tab on each of those little connections. They're called Fakra connections. You can push down the tab and you can just pull it out of the back of the unit. I recommend taking this unit out completely and just putting it on the floor or putting it away from your workspace um, just so you have some, a little bit more clearance to do this. You'll want to remove your shifter. Um, I do think it's a good idea to remove the shifter and all the little trim pieces down here. Some people remove the shifter and leave the trim just so it doesn't get, uh, you can put a cloth over it so it doesn't get damaged. But to route our aux cable, we'll need to remove all of this anyways. So I'm going to take all this trim out uh, right now to kind of show you guys what to do next. Um, I recommend putting the car in neutral. Um, it's kind of easier to put the shifter in that position. So I'm going to put the ignition on and just move the shifter into neutral. As you can see, it is right there. Then we can simply pull up on it and the entire piece will come out. As you can see, the whole boot, uh, we can put that aside for now. I went ahead and put the car in park for now, which is all we need. And we can go ahead and pull up on this trim. This trim is simply held in by some clips at the very front of it. There are no screws attached. There are a few cables um, for this guy over here and as well as these lights. So I just gonna kind of wanna pull up very gently, nothing too much. And then eventually it will come loose like so. Then we can simply pull it out. And uh, once you remove the connectors that connect to both um, over here, in fact, it might just be one connector. Yeah, it is just one connector. So once you remove that one connector, you're also to put this aside. I'm gonna put it back here for now. For reference, I believe this is a connector down here which connects to that little uh, that block on the uh, trim piece itself. Next up, there are two T20s over here, as well as two T20s over here for the HVAC controls. I'm gonna remove this guy first. It's a little bit easier. Two HVAC, I mean two T20s. So this piece simply comes out and there are a couple connections back there you need to remove. I've got the screws out now, and this guy will simply just pull on out. Remember, I have my cables connected already. You will simply have to disconnect those yourself on your car. Be mindful of the trim below as to not scratch it. At the back, you can see there are three connections that are supposed to go back to this guy over here. Yep, so this guy, this guy, and this guy all come out of the same HVAC controls. To remove them, you simply have to press down at the tab at the very top and then slide this guy down and it'll pop right out of the connector. Next up, I'm gonna remove these two T20s down here for the cigarette lighter area. Um, this is where the cigarette lighter is. There's one plug at the bottom of this for the cigarette lighter is a big white block. For now, I'm just gonna remove this and it's gonna, simply gonna slide out of place and then we have more room to work with for our aux cable. For reference, all four of these screws you just removed are the exact same length. That is those for those two down here and the two for the HVAC controls. They're all shorter than the two for the actual command unit itself, those little locking guides and stuff like that. All right, with those screws out, you can go ahead and pull this out of place. It simply slides 
and then we can sort of maneuver it around our little shifter over there. Might be useful to put the car in neutral, but looks like we're all good. Here's that white connector I was gonna be talking about. It is down here, I just kinda of tucked it away for now. With that aside, we can start moving on backwards and get rid of this guy. We move it out of the way at least. Our end goal is to run a uh, aux cable from around this area and below this little trim piece over here. Not trim piece, but it's more of a sort of structural piece of the dash, but it's gonna go below this, run through here, underneath all this stuff and into our center console. We may need to cut a small hole kind of back here. I actually already have a hole here because I had an Android system in here before, um, the previous version of this, so I already had a system working where the aux cable was coming out over here. But I will show all you guys that in more detail very shortly. The first thing we're going to do is remove a T20 right at the front over here. It's kind of attached to this controller as well. That T20 is now removed from the very front. There is also one below this little rubber piece over here. Just going to pull this one out. There is another T20 right over there. Go ahead and take that one out as well. With that T20 out, you can kind of lightly pry up on this little top piece of trim. And if you pull it forward, it's all going to just sort of come out. If you have any scratches on this piece, it is very easy to scratch, so keep that in mind. But if you have any scratches, this would be a great time to sort of repaint it or clean it up a little bit. Our next step will be removing this guy, not completely, but just out of the way from this little area over here. As you can see, part of it sort of slides through this piece of plastic over here. You need to pull it up and pull backwards, and we should be good to go. Let's leave it aside for now. We're going to kind of left, rest it in place like this. Moving to the back of the car, we will need to loosen the rear AC controls, which is made of a very cheap plastic in the W204. Simply pull up on it. Once you prime it enough, it sort of just pops out of place, and we can just rest it back here. Does not need to be fully removed, just rest it a little bit down there. Now you can see there are two T20s right over here. Go ahead and remove those, and the entire center console will pop out of place. All right, now this set of four screws we just removed from the back of the center console, the middle and the very front. These are all the same length as well, and they're all quite a bit shorter than the other ones we removed earlier. Literally, just by pulling on the center console a little bit, it's going to pop out like so. As you can see, there's quite a big gap here. The only thing tying it back to the car is this wire that connects this guy over here. No big deal. We shouldn't slide a wire through here. So for now, we can leave this be. Now we can move on to removing the trim for the upper part of the instrument cluster and the lower part. And we can get to moving the screen. Now, my screen is out because I never had one before this installation because I had the Android in it before. I'm going to put my screen back in to show you guys how to take it out properly, and we should be good to go. Hopefully, there's no confusion about that. And just like magic, the old and very dirty screen is back in place. Um, so I'm just going to remove this guy. First thing I do is take these little guys out, slide them to the in toward the screen, and they simply pop out of place. There will be two T20 Torx screws in these little slots over here. You can go ahead and remove those right now. Next up, we'll remove the trim around the screen itself. So we're gonna remove this bottom piece first that wraps around all the way below the cluster. Simply use a pick tool or a pry tool like this and sort of pop up on the trim. It should sort of pop out of place. You can kind of see it's already loose over here. Don't mind or mind this piece over here that adjusts the uh, cluster lighting. Don't uh, snap that off, kind of have to go over it. So keep that in mind. Once that is popped out, simply take it out and just put it in somewhere else. We don't really need it right now. We're not going to need to we put it back together. Once that piece is out, we can now move on to the top piece, which will be the same deal. Use a pry tool and just sort of pry down it. It's going to pop out of place. Uh, don't force it. Now, keep in mind, my car, I've done this like three times now, so things are probably a bit looser than they were before. Um, there's no rattling, no creaking, something like that, but it, it is easier to come out. So just don't worry if it takes a little bit of effort. Um, just don't force it is all. Just like that, this one is also pretty much out and ready to come out. So now to remove this trim that kind of surrounds the cluster over here as well as the screen. Keep in mind that the screen is kind of held in place to some clips in the back of this piece and there are also some wires behind it. So what you may need to do is kind of pull it forwards, disconnect the two wires. There's one Fokker cable and also one traditional cable plugged to the back of this guy over here. Then you can go ahead and remove the entire thing, and uh, we can go ahead and remove some stuff from this trim piece before we put it back in. Like the other trim pieces, this one simply pops out. Now you kind of put a hand up here and sort of pull gently, and it will kind of let go. As you can see, it is pretty easy. Just be sure not to pull too hard in certain areas. You don't want to damage anything, and look at that. It is basically coming on out of here. And then once they're disconnected, you can kind of pull the entire trim out of place. It is a little bit heavier than the other one, so be careful about that. So I've got the trim in my lap right now, um, and the screen is right over here. 
the two connections would plug in right here and right here. Those two wires are right here. We get the blue one over here, the Fokker connection, as well as the other plug. But on the screen itself, you can see it is kind of clipped into place with this black clip over here. We can go ahead and remove this guy or loosen it rather and pull up on the entire screen. Once you do that, the back cover for the screen can actually pop off like you can see here. It exposes the circuit board, so be very careful about this. But now you can sort of pull up on this metal piece and the actual physical screen is right over here and it comes on right out. I would keep this, do not get rid of this for sure. Um, if you want to go back to stock or if you want to, um, I don't know, uh, keep this for resale. I would try and keep the screen in the housing like this is over here. Just put it aside for now, we don't really need it anymore and now we can remove this actual black trim piece from here there are a couple clips down here that hold it in place there is one little tab over here as well as one over there and of course this guy's also kind of holding it in place as well so we're going to get rid of this little black trim piece that goes around the screen i've gotten that out now you can kind of see right over here is where it was kind of below these two tabs over here now we're basically done with the removal of all the parts and we can start installing things. Okay, so you can see I've got the connector all put in place like this. And those are the two orange cables I was talking about being very careful of. I'm going to keep saying it because it is very, very important not to mess with those cables too much. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start moving some cables and uh, kind of moving them up toward the top area. So uh, the cable that's supposed to plug into the Android unit itself is the little smaller white tab. Uh, this guy over here we need this to end up over there. So there are a couple ways of doing this. Um, it is pretty tricky to get your hands back behind because there's the air vent stuff and some other weird stuff. So we kind of have to go along the side. A little trick I've learned over these installs of uh, sort of getting the wires behind some kind of really narrow and tight areas is using either a coat hanger or I use uh, usually some uh, rubber tubing of some sort, really narrow diameter tubing. Um, I tape the wires to one end and kind of pull them through um, and kind of go behind like so. I'm gonna show you guys how I do that in a moment. Um, it is pretty easy, at, you know, you save a lot of time doing that instead of kind of messing around with your hands back there. So um, it makes makes things a lot, lot easier. Okay, so what I've done so far is I've gotten this to the tube sort of right from up top and uh, down to over here. Was not the easiest thing in the world, but uh, it's gonna make this a lot easier when we have to get the wires through. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape the end of this guy to this tube. I'll slowly pull it up with this guy and kind of maneuver it with my other hand if I can and can reach it at least and eventually we can get up to the top where it should need to be. Alrighty so I've got this cable now through here. Um, if you do not end up wanting to use this method by using the tube you can actually just reach your hand down here. You can kind of get your hand depending on how big it is. Mine's pretty small so I can get my hand to right about over here and I was able to grab the cable and kind of pull it up with my fingers. Um, so now we're going to move on to the next sort of harness we have to use which is the USB one. Um, the one that has the connection that connects to this blue guy over here. Then we can round up the um, USB cables somewhere else. So for this guy, I'm going to use the top. I'm actually going to stick it to the top first. I'm going to plug this guy into the blue Fokker cable. And then for the USB ports themselves, I'm going to slide these down the right side over there and have them pop out down there. You can kind of see where I have opened up the lower trim piece below the glove box. Um, there's simply a T20 down there. You can take it out and the plastic trim will pop out. This would be the same procedure if you were to do your cabin air filter, you would take that piece off and then you know change out the filter and so on. But um, yeah, I simply take out one piece over there. Um, this is my CarPlay adapter. I'll make a separate video about this CarPlay adapter. Um, it is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, for now I'm gonna go ahead and start using my tube, my rubber tube I have over here. Um, and then uh, sort of having it run down this way and out over there. So just by kind of feeling around and kind of following the wires from up there, I was able to get these two USB ports to come out over here. And um, now we can leave these kind of sticking out and have them plug into the car box or the uh, car play box over here. Or what we can do is pop this guy open, our glove box, slide the cables in here, and it should be able to close without a problem at all. Check that out. So now we conveniently have our USB cables tucked away inside of our glove box along with some Starbucks napkins, your owner's manual, and your registration. The only really tricky part now, instead of putting it back together, would be getting all these cables kind of in a place where this all fits back in all nice and snug. It is a very tight fit um, with all these new cables in the way. So what I've kind of done is 
as I've been installing this, I've been kind of been putting the new parts of the harness that we're not going to be using, for example, the aftermarket backup camera attachments with the RCA cables back in the corner over there. You kind of see they're peeking out over there. I'm going to do some better uh, work of pushing them back there a little bit more. Now, we want to get our aux cable um, from this area over here. We want to get that all the way down to our center console like I was telling you guys about before. Now, luckily, we've already had that disassembled, so it's going to be simply getting the cable out of here, kind of putting it below the AC controls and all that good stuff, and uh, bringing it down this little shield, and slowly making its way to over here. Okay, so that was as simple as just kind of plugging in over here, reaching down, and getting it below this piece way down there. And you can kind of see it, it just flows right through. It's not very hard at all. You don't even need to use a tube. You can just kind of use your hands. Um, now we're going to get this into our center console itself. Okay, so I've got our aux cable over here. As you guys can see, it is sort of just coming over here. And then here I've put the center console top area sort of pushed to the side a little bit. This is actually quite a big open space where you can kind of put a different module down here if you want to. Uh, kind of this side where there's no cup holder, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's going to go right in the center console right over here. And uh, I did actually cut in my previous Android install, I cut a little notch over here so you can kind of fit the cable in um, right there. So if you'd like to do that, you can kind of drill a hole if you'd like to, or you can just use a small little saw and cut it off. Regardless of what you do, it's going to be barely noticeable from the outside. So just make it kind of clean. Um, don't go, don't rush it. Uh, Kind of an awkward space for sure, but um, it'll be worth in the end not to have a big mess. So I'm going to take my aux cable over here and just feed it through. And there we've got the aux cable now in our center console. Um, we can go ahead and kind of tuck this away below, kind of out of the way of everything, and make sure it goes through this groove over here and over here. And we can kind of put our center console back in place. Now the beauty of having everything sort of uh, loose right now is that we can give everything a little bit of slack, and then we kind of put things together. It can just let you notice the slack kind of goes away. All right, so you can see we've got the cable in the center console, which was our end goal. And now we can put this top piece back on, and uh, we can route this cable down here, through this little slot over here, and it'll keep going down below where we had it before, and it finally comes back up here. Things are looking great right now, so I've got the top portion of the center console put back in place. Um, if I want to, I could put the screws back in, but there's really no reason at the moment. I figure we can get the thing kind of working and just making sure everything's all good. Then we can go ahead and screw everything back into place. But uh, yeah, this cable comes out right over here and he's going to look at it. So now will be the fun part of kind of attempting to get the unit, the head unit that is, plugged back into the main harness and then uh, plugging the top portion into the Android screen just to kind of make sure everything's working. So I'm going to go get the Android screen real quick. And we can kind of check it out and make sure it's all working as expected. Here we've got our harness for the Andrea, which is going to plug back into the command unit. I put a cloth down just to protect the surface below. Now we finally have to get this guy over here and put this into our new connector over here on the far right side. That's going to be the far right side when you're looking at it from behind like that. We can go ahead and slide it in place and I then plug it back in the unit along with every other Fokker cable we have over here. Do not forget the one red wire that's going to go up to the very front of the unit as well as there's going to be one open connector that's going to be that peach colored uh, cable. Basically, whatever you had plugged in before, just make sure it gets plugged in again. So basically, I've got the uh, harness loosely connected to the actual head unit itself and then I have all the fire connections connected. Now it's time to get the Android screen and plug it in up top over here and it'll be the moment of truth. Just fired it up. Looks like we are good to go. Um, there are a few things we're going to want to change, but I'll go over those once it's fully installed and we don't need to worry about, you know, wiring and kind of holding it up right now. So <laughs> yeah, we we'll find to do that in a very short amount of time and I'll be back with you guys very shortly. So before I go back and reinstall everything now and put everything back to how it was, I want to mention real quick that um, there are two antenna you can use for 4G or GPS. Now I'm not going to use the 4G capability of this thing. You can put a SIM card in over there, um, but I'm just not going to use it, to be honest. Um, but for GPS, you can have offline maps with the Sigic app. I'll show you, I'll make a separate video about that, honestly, um, because it's kind of more of a uh, specific thing about this unit. But you can put the GPS antenna right over there, although I believe there's also one built in, so not a huge deal. But uh, this car actually has a lot of space behind where you can actually tuck away the... Um, the uh, antenna if you'd like to. So the more square one is going to be your GPS module or GPS antenna rather and the more uh, the thin rectangular one is going to be your 4G one.
So uh, this is notoriously one of the hardest cars to, um, or hardest Mercedes at least, to put the command unit back in when you have the Android head unit installed. Um, this is mainly because there's no room by, behind there to get all the cables really tucked away. So what I recommend doing is uh, zip tying as many cables as you can behind and below the unit on the little step part below. Um, and then you can sort of have an easier time putting all this away. Um, you can see it's kind of a mess right now, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and push some stuff just down and out of the way as much as I can before I really shove this guy back in there. And uh, for the rest of the interior, you know, putting it back together is basically the same as you put it, or took it apart rather, um, except for up top. I will record on how to uh, put it back together from the top because you have the new bracket, of course, so I'll show you guys how to do that. But yeah, I'm gonna put this, try and put this back in now. Um, be patient with it. Don't, you know, just get frustrated and try and cram it in there. You kind of have to manipulate a little bit um, and try and get the cables down as much as possible. Putting the unit back in, even without the Androids, in an ordeal in itself, uh, but adding more wires um, and more complexity is gonna make things a little bit more tricky. So, this is now my second time installing one of these in this car, um, so you'd think it'd be a little bit easier, but no, it's about the same. Uh, my car is screaming at me because the car is in, uh, not in, in park right now to get more space for the uh, unit. But essentially what I've done so far is you can see back there you have this little carpeting and sound, sound insulation kind of stuff so i've pulled up a little bit and it kind of exposed a new compartment back there now you can kind of see this is where the connector is right here for the harness um, that connects back into the other part of the harness so i put that back there um it's not in the ideal position right now you can see it's kind of sticking up uh, because of the, the strain from this wire this main wire right over here i think if this part were like two three inches longer this would be a much easier process. Um, I will put some zip ties. I'm going to cut these off soon. I'm um, just kind of manage things a little bit better. Also, the fuse box. I slid right under. I'm not even sure if you guys can really see it, to be honest. But if you trust me, it is right under somewhere over there. So I'm going to keep trying and pressing stuff back there. Um, going to use some more zip ties. Kind of keeping things at bay. And hopefully, we can manage to get this in relatively soon. Um, this has been a huge pain. You guys probably experienced this already. Other videos I've watched that do this installation kind of gonna gloss over this bit. They gonna say, oh, you know, it's tough, but you'll figure it out. Um, I'm trying to give you a little more guidance on that, especially when it comes to pushing stuff a little bit back there. Um, and I'll be back with you guys with an update very soon. Okay, guys, looks like my trick of zip tying some wires in the very back and pushing a bullet shelf behind a little sound installation piece has worked. Quick message from future Sam, uh, be sure to plug in your HVAC controls before you put the command unit back in. I made this mistake in this video, you can kind of see, I'll go back and redo it later. Um, but you want to make sure those are back in before you put the command in, otherwise you can't access those screws. We're basically back in place now, I can kind of push it in and we can screw them in right now. I'm going to go ahead and screw the unit back in, and then hopefully it still works. I'm going to check my, just by uh, plugging it back into the uh, Android right over there. and. Uh, then we should be good to put the rest of the car back together, and I'll show you guys the upper dash portion as well. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, guys. Thank goodness. And I don't mind all the fingerprints and all that, and the nasty glare from the uh, my flash on my camera. But it is all working. It is now installed. Now the easy part is going to be putting it all back together. Um, the rest of it, made it rather, um, meaning the trim and all that good stuff. So the screen is working perfectly fine. The audio all works. Just heads up, these two screws over here are very, very easy to um, drop down below. Essentially, they go into these locks, which uh, pull up and lock down the command unit itself when you tighten them. So be very careful as not to drop those. All right, when I plug this the last time, I'm going to uh, put the rest of the trim back in and all that good stuff. I'll show you guys how to put the top trim in, like I said earlier. Okay, guys, we are almost, almost there. So I've put this all part back together. I made a mistake earlier. Um, you wouldn't want to put the AC controls in before you put the command unit back in. So if you do, like I had no problem, just kind of loosen the bolts a little bit, pull the unit out a little bit, and then just slide that guy in, plug all the connectors in, you should be good to go. That's all I did. Um, it wasn't really a big pain to put this back in again. It was just pretty simple. Basically loosen up the screws, pull it out, put this guy in, put those two screws in, push this guy back in, screw it up, and it was all good to go. So... I also put the top trim pieces, so this backing plate, that first plate down with the uh, bezels for the uh, gauge cluster, then the bottom trim piece and the top one. Remember the top one goes first because there are some latches at the very end of it, which this is gonna slide over. So those are all set now. And now you can put in the Android screen bracket. 
All right, so here is the bezel for the Android display. Essentially, it's gonna go slide right in between the top and bottom trim pieces. I'm gonna use some screws to screw into the old place where the, um, right over here and right over here, where the old display was connected in. And then we can slide the display on top of this and plug all the connections in that we need to. Um, so it'll be a good time to get your GPS and your uh, 4G or Wi-Fi antennas. Um, and you can just kind of slide them back there. And then you can slide the connections through the centerpiece over here. And then, um, yeah, I was recommend putting some felt tape or carpet tape, whatever you want to call it, around the edges to prevent any noises at all. Um, I did this a while back. I'll put a link to that video right in the description and also right over here. And it should be able to tell you how to do this and have, have prevent any interior noise from adding this display. You also have the ability to screw the display onto this bracket itself. Um, now, personally, I never did this before. Um, I didn't have any issues without doing it. Um, and the main reason for that is that when you have um, this guy sort of in place and kind of in the um, center over there, it's hard to really access the holes behind the display. You'll see what I mean when, I, when it's in there. So personally, I wouldn't worry about these two things. You can if you'd like to, if you can figure it out, but uh, I haven't had an issue without doing that. Here's a better look at the GPS antenna. It is a kind of rectangular little box. Um, the Wi-Fi or 4G one is a much longer, sort of uh, longer rectangular flatter piece. Um, they're labeled on the back of the unit. You can see over here, you have the uh, 4G and GPS connections down here. And then once you connect those, you should be all set having the external antenna. There's our bezel all in place as it should be with no screws yet. We just kind of pushed in place um, with the felt tape kind of there. Um, and uh, now you can put the screws in little caps over them, and then we can slide the connectors into this guy and then slide it over the portions of this bracket over here. Got the screws tightened there and we've got the covers on top. This thing is not going anywhere. Now it's time, time to put the screen on top. Now I noticed that my cable has almost no slack um, for this side. It's gonna be a little tricky to uh, plug it in and also install it. So bear with me for a second. This one's gonna be a lot easier because we got plenty of slack. Um, but uh, just keep that in mind when you're kind of installing it as you go. Having more slack is always going to be a little bit better. Um, there's really not much room this can go, so I don't want to force either. So, um, yeah, wish me luck. I'm going to get it on now, and hopefully it all still works. Got it all plugged in. It is now mounted to the actual bezel and the dash. Let's just double check. Everything's good. Sweet. That's the uh, kind of out-of-the-box start of the screen. I'm just going to change that in a moment. But um, that is a relief. This is almost done. All we have left is to put this middle trim piece back on with the air vents. Don't forget this plug over here. It may have fallen down there, so just keep that in mind. Don't let that uh, slip your mind. And um, yeah, then we can put the trim back on and we should be all good. Just a heads up, it usually would not take this long to start up. It is um, kind of more of a uh, first time thing. Well guys, that essentially completes the full installation of your Android screen in a W204. I'm gonna go over some small things real quick before you get started. I will make a separate video on the overall functions of this unit, but I want to go over some small things really quickly first before you get started. Uh, you want to go to settings real quick. You're going to want to go to, uh, at the very bottom, factory. The password is 1314 on all the Avin USA units. Once you enter there, you can kind of see there are a few little settings. You might not know what they mean. Um, some of these things are pretty self-explanatory, and then some of them are not. So, for example, you want to go to uh, Imperial Units for Unit Selection. That basically tells you um, what unit is going to be showing where. Um, it looks like the AC one is not quite updated to show Imper Imperial Units yet, so that's something they need to change in the future. Um, also, we have some other cameras and stuff like that, which doesn't apply to me because I'm only using the stock rear view camera. Then we go to Vehicle over here. You can see there are some other things over here. Um, so I have the um, Harman Kardon speaker, so I left that Harman Kardon. And then uh, for the face, it seems that the knob type A works. I have a coupe and I'm in North America, so I put left driver's seat, two doors, um, put an axe pedometer 280. I don't really know what matters uh, or what it, which really shows. Um, but yeah, some other random selections like this. If you hold the voice command button, it'll now open the uh, dedicated navigation map if you're on the Android itself, which is pretty cool. Um, then you can go to car display. This one's important. So essentially this was what tells the Android what your car came with from the factory. So if you have a W204 facelift um, and kind of most cars from this time period, you'll have NTG 4.7. Now, what's confusing about this is you have to select NTG 4.5. Um, 
the half screen one, 2013 to 2015, NTG 4.5-4.0, um, the half screen. So you want to select that if you have a car like mine. This means you have um, a facelift W204 with navigation and all that good stuff. I believe only 2013 or 14 and up is NTG 4.7. The only difference is the darker color palettes. You have the uh, black, dark, dark blue, and the reds and the whites. Um, so if your gauge cluster looks like this, you will have NTG 4.7. If you have the yellowish one, you have NTG 4.5. So you can select that and this allows you to go back into NTG mode, which essentially means you can access your normal uh, navigation system and all that stuff that you had before, which is pretty cool. Also, you want the uh, protocol to be type 4.5 for NTG 4.5. This is the NTG mode I was talking about. Essentially, if you tap back over there, it takes you back to your OEM sort of system you got over here, which is pretty neat. So we have our OEM navigation, OEM audio with the radio and stuff like that. Bluetooth phone if you like to use this instead, and all your normal settings you used to have before. To go back, you just swipe the screen and you go back to Android. You can also use the uh, scroll wheel over here to control everything up there, which is pretty sweet. Um, they did not miss out on that. Um, I do wish, I know my old unit, which was not the latest version with Qualcomm, you could see the temperature in Fahrenheit up here, but it uh, looks like they haven't quite added that yet. Pretty cool you can do that though. It's kind of like an S-Class where uh, the S-Classes of this time and also the newer ones and also most newer cities actually have the temperature and all the fan speeds and stuff like that up at the top, which is pretty neat. This car never had that from the factory. Um, so that, that's cool. Um, but if it was in Fahrenheit, it'd be a lot better and a lot easier, obviously. Um, but that basically wraps up this video. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Um, this is a video I've been meaning to make for a long time now. It's kind of been in my car um, sitting for a while. So finally got around to doing it. Um, thanks to Avin again for sponsoring this video and supplying this unit. Please go check out the link in the description below if you like this one. Um, and we should be good to go. I'll make some more videos on this unit and you guys can stay tuned for those. I met a guy named Thomas. He offered to take some pics of the SLS. Um, this this is pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. Really appreciate it. Check out his video.